Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Deanna and I'm currently a software engineer for one of Canada's top five banks. And today, I will be telling you my story of how I became a software engineer without having a computer science degree and without having to pay a lot of money on bootcamp. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure to gently smash the subscribe button as it will give me more motivation to create videos like this that can inspire you and others to become a software engineer in the future. And while you're at it, make sure to turn on your post notifications so you get notified whenever I post new videos. Alright, so this video is going to be pretty much me talking, so it's going to be a chill video. Not much going on. So we're basically just gonna go through what I went through to become a software engineer without having, you know, all the mainstream computer science and bootcamp and whatnot. Alright, to begin with, I'm gonna talk about why I chose or why I ended up having a biomedical engineering degree. So it all started back in high school. Grade 12 comes rolling around. People need to apply to their universities and what program they want to be in. Now I didn't really want to go to engineering because my heart was fully set on to go to med school but upon researching more and talking to more doctors about you know the process of going to med school it seemed a little bit tough and it is really hard it's difficult to get in especially right after university so in order to get to med school your GPA needs to be really high and competitive so that's one thing that kind of worried me is that I don't want to put all my life into getting that high GPA and not being able to enjoy anything basically. So I applied to all life sciences in University of Toronto and I just threw in a wild card to apply for Ryerson's Biomedical Engineering. So when time rolls around, it's like the last day to decide whether I want to go to life sciences or engineering. And in my head, I thought, you know, if I went to life sciences, I messed up my GPA, it's not that competitive. I'm basically not able to go to med school. I'm doomed, basically. So I thought of going to biomedical engineering instead because even if by the end of it, I don't have the GPA that is really competitive, I can still be an engineer and make pretty decent amount of money. So that was my thought process and this is why I chose to go into biomedical engineering. Alright, moving on from high school, I'm going to talk about what biomedical engineering offers. So probably now, as most of you would know, I graduated last year in 2019 with a biomedical engineering degree from Ryerson University. So basically, biomedical engineering is relatively a new discipline of engineering, unlike mechanical engineering and electrical engineering who has been here for longer. So in my opinion and in my experience, the biomedical engineering program at Ryerson University is diverse. You learn a lot of diverse skills that can be applicable. Now I'm saying this because it kind of impacted my job searching process, it made it a little bit slower. So what do I mean by Ryerson having a diverse biomedical engineering program? In my experience, we learned tons of many different skills, or actually we took courses from different disciplines. So we took courses from biology, chemistry, chemical engineering, um, chemical engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering, and computer engineering. So we took a little bit of those courses and learned it as well. Now it's good in a way that I learned a diverse skill set and I can put that on my resume, somewhat sell it. And to be honest with you guys, I didn't really sell that diverse skill as much as I should have, which probably contributed to why it took me so long forever to find a job. But anyways, that can be seen, you know, as a bad thing is that because you're jack of all trades but you're master of none, so you're basically not specialized in anything. But it can also be good in terms that you have diverse skill and you can be flexible in a way, but I, I really don't think, you know, it, it's beneficial in a way for the jobs that I'm looking for. But basically in university, I only took two. Two computer 
programming courses. The first one was just basically just learning C and how it works. And the second one is like actually my favorite. It's learning C++ and object-oriented programming. A plus that love the course. I'm just you know I'm sad because we only took two of those courses and I in hindsight you know I would love to take more courses up my knowledge on software engineering but yeah those two were just intros the first one was just really really basic it wasn't even intro the second was actually introduction to software engineering so those are my two backgrounds of how techy um, my education was but you know I graduated with biomedical engineering degree I'm not about to go back again to get a software engineering degree and spend four years of my life in school and I'm really thankful that you know I have this software engineering job with me right now okay I'm feeling like I'm selling the biomedical engineering program at Ryerson too short we did actually learn other coding methods such as MATLAB Python and we touch a little bit of the machine learning with R, but you know, it's not really, I can't really apply it or I don't know. There's a multitude of languages that we get to touch a little bit, but I would say I'm a master and an expert in all of them. Okay, so we're now clear of what my education background looks like. So now I will be telling you guys what my fourth year of university looks like in terms of job searching because this is where most people start looking for their jobs after graduating. So I graduated in June, but I started job hunting in January. I thought that I was early, I thought I was ahead of the game. Boy, I was wrong. If you're applying in January and you're graduating in June, you're kind of late for the game. And in January, most of the jobs that I was looking for was actually in California because I wanted to move there with my boyfriend. But unfortunately, in order for me to move to California, there was a lot of process that needs to be done. And also employers are not quite sure if they want to go through the hassle of employing someone who is Canadian that wants to work in the US. So that was the start of my job searching process. After graduation in June 2019, I still don't have a job and I was freaking out. I don't know how to explain this to you guys, but if you're in the position right now as I was before, I feel for you, I hear you, I know what you're going through, just hang on there and I know something good will come your way. So yes, I graduated and boy, I was stagnant for almost eight months, which I'm kind of thankful for. People have been telling me, oh, you should get any job within one year, anything at all. And I was freaking out because I'm almost going to hit my one year mark and I still didn't find anything for me. So in 2019, I was basically handing resumes left and right, applying online, submitting resumes, completing forms, everything. You know, I probably averaged about 20 applications per week. So December rolls around and I'm still not hearing of anything. You know, my best friend came over to my house to discuss a project that I need help with. This is just a side project that I asked her to help me out with. And she was, you know, she was absolutely amazing. She came over to my house during the winter and came here and helped me out. And we chatted a little bit. And basically every time she comes over, I would, I would complain to her that I haven't found a job yet and I would tell her how difficult it was for me to find a job. So basically, I was ranting to her every time she came here. And so December rolls around, she told me to apply to this position. And you know what, to be honest, I wasn't enthusiastic at first. I was like, okay, I'm gonna apply there because you told me to but I'm not expecting anything from it. I'm not gonna expect an email or whatsoever. I'm just basically gonna apply and forget about it. While I was doing this, she was actually talking to a recruiter who she met that works at a bank and basically what she did was she up talked me. So basically she boasted all my skill set. Without my best friend, I wouldn't have been able to get this job. So I'm so grateful for her on helping me out on this. So essentially, that is how I kind of got my job. 
Um, a month after my application, I didn't basically hear anything. Um, two months after, they were like, they were, they emailed me again and say, hey, we still have spots. And in my head, and I'm like, oh, I read this before. I was so tempted not to reply, but I'm so grateful that I actually did reply because boy, oh boy, two days after I was scheduled for an interview, and then a week after I actually got the interview, and on that day of, I got my position. And I'm so happy, I was so relieved. I actually quit my job at Shoppers. So yeah, that, that is my journey of how I became a software engineer without having computer science degree or paying so much on boot camp. I know this is just a scratch on the surface of my story, but I will dive into more details of everything, of every aspect of my job searching and I'm gonna create more content that can help other people or you guys to finally find that job that you're looking for. So if you want to know anything about my journey of finding a job and becoming a software engineer, please feel free to leave it down in the comments and I will reply to them as soon as I can. If you've reached the end of this video, please subscribe to my channel because we're almost at 1300 and I know we can make it. So that is all for my video for today. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Darling, you send me